Hi there guys, hope you're doing well. This is your friend and tutor Manas. So let's see what this problem has in store. Here we go. A force P is equal to 450 Newton is applied at point B of a weightless plate hinged at E. Determine the moment of force P about E, the horizontal force that must be applied at F for the block to be in equilibrium, the smallest force required at F to keep the block in equilibrium. All right. Okay, so this is the weightless plate that we are talking about, which has been hinged at E and there is this force P acting in a certain direction at point B. If you keep your right hand thumb over here and try to move your baby finger along this direction, this is the line of action. It indicates that this force P produces a clockwise turning moment. And this is something that we're going to be calculating initially. But for that, what we need to do is we need to resolve this force into components. So it's going to have two components. This is the horizontal component 450 cos 60 it's also gonna have a vertical component this way this is gonna be 450 sine 60 well let's go ahead and calculate the moment of this force p about this point e all right so let's do this part a moment of force p about point e is gonna be equal to let us take into consideration this force 450 sine 60 keep your thumb over here at e and try to move your baby finger in this direction you'll realize that this force produces a clockwise moment and we're going to put a negative sign for that so negative of force into distance force is 450 um, sine 60 multiplied by what is the perpendicular distance so this is the perpendicular distance okay so what we're doing basically is we're dropping a perpendicular from point e onto the line of action of this force that is 450 sine 60. So this is the perpendicular dropped and the length of this perpendicular is equal to 30 centimeter. So let me write 30 over here. All right, this is done. One force is still left, 450 cos 60. So please have a look, keep your thumb over here and try to move your baby finger along this direction. Okay, it produces an anti-clockwise turning moment. Okay, now if you were to drop a perpendicular from me, it would be this perpendicular, EA. Okay. So this is the force 450 cos 60 multiplied by this perpendicular distance 12.5 cos 60 multiplied by 12.5 and when you put this into a calculator you're going to get this negative of 8878.74 forces in newtons distances in centimeters so newton centimeters is the value of the moment all right Okay, let us now jump to part B of this particular problem. Okay, so in part B, what we're supposed to do is um, we need to calculate the horizontal force that must be applied at F for the block to stay in equilibrium. Okay, so some kind of a horizontal force has to be applied. Let us say that we are applying that horizontal force in the right hand side direction. And let us right now name this force as F1. Okay, so for everything to be in equilibrium, we have this equation. What summation of moment of all the forces is equal to zero. So what we need to do is we need to take these forces into consideration and take their moments and equate them finally equal to zero. Okay, 450 sin 60, 450 cos 60 and F1. All right, so let me write this down. Again, this entire stuff has to be rewritten. Okay, uh, let me write this immediately, minus 450. And as far as the turning moment of this particular force is concerned, this is its line of action. And if you were to drop a perpendicular from me, it would be this ED. Okay. And this perpendicular distance in fact is 22.5. Keep your thumb over here and try to move your baby finger in this direction. You will realize that this force F1 produces an anti-clockwise moment. And let us put a positive sign for that. F1 multiplied by 22.5 okay and a, all of this shall be equal to zero what we need to do is we need to do this calculation and f1 shall be equal to 8878.74 we already know this value okay this value we already know how much is this this much 8878.74 whole divided by 22.5 you just need to do this calculation and you're going to get the value of f1 equal to 394 0.6 newtons that's it so if you apply this much force that is 394.6 newtons along this direction there is not going to be any turning moment okay the rectangular plate will not turn as it turned in case number one or case a all right so let us go ahead and try to solve this part c so what has been asked in part c let us check it out um, smallest force required at f 
to keep the block in equilibrium okay now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be erasing this right now let me erase this and what i essentially need to do is i need to find that minimum force okay which has to be applied at point f now right now let me assume that the force is represented by again f1 and the minimum force is at a certain angle let us say um let us say theta all right so it's going to have two components again this is going to have one component in the form of f cos theta rather f1 cos theta it's going to have a vertical component in the form of f1 sin theta okay everything has to stay in equilibrium it has already been said block has to stay in equilibrium so when you speak of equilibrium this should immediately strike your mind moment about point e okay is equal to zero moment about the hinge so let, let me try to work out these forces this is f1 cos theta okay if you try to keep your thumb over here right hand thumb move in this direction um this produces an anti-clockwise moment so f1 cos theta multiplied by this that is 22.5 so f1 cos theta multiplied by 22.5 what about this f1 sin theta if you watch carefully keep your right hand thumb over here try to move in the upper direction again this also produces an anti-clockwise moment okay and watch carefully this is it's the line of action of f1 sin theta this is the perpendicular distance and this distance guys is equal to 22.5 okay since this is anti-clockwise in nature we'll put a positive sign and f1 sin theta multiplied by 22.5 what's next what are the remaining forces so these are the remaining forces okay 450 sin 60 and 450 cos 60 now the overall turning effect of these two forces we already know how much is that negative of 8878.74 so negative of 8878.74 and all of this all of this shall be equal to zero what we are supposed to find is we are supposed to find the minimum value or the smallest force okay so let me separate this f1 and let me write this as cos theta plus sin theta into 22.5 let me take this outside shall be equal to 8878.74 so what i can do is i can finally write f1 is equal to you can uh, divide 8878.74 by um, 22.5 and when you do so you're gonna get this that is 394.6 okay whole divided by this cos theta plus sin theta all right guys so let's read the question once again we need the smallest force and what we initially did we assumed that let the smallest force be f1 at a certain angle theta okay now we've got an expression for f1 in terms of theta if you want to have the minimum value of theta you should have the maximum value for this denominator maximum value of the denominator for that what we need to do is we need to consider this as a mathematical expression okay and we need to differentiate this d by d theta for cos theta plus sin theta and equate it to zero something which we have learned in 12th grade maximum minima so differential of cos theta is negative of sin theta and differential of sin theta is obviously you know very well cos theta everything is equal to zero then you can write this as sin theta is equal to cos theta then uh, tan theta okay cos theta comes over here sin theta by cos theta becomes tan theta is equal to one and we know very well theta is equal to 45 degree fine and when you put this value 45 degree over here okay when you put this value over here that is theta is equal to 45 degree you're going to get the minimum value of the force that has to be applied at point f and that value ultimately is equal to let me let me check um divided by cos 45 plus sine 45 and it works out as uh, 279.03 or you can also write this as 280 newtons approximately i'll write, write this as 279 newtons approx so that's it so guys that was all from my side for today if you like the content and presentation in this video do give it a big thumbs up and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of mechanics then do recommend this channel to your friends and classmates so that all of them can benefit i'll see you again with a new problem until then it's a wrap this is manas patnaik signing off Take care, have a great day and keep learning.